So far, we have covered the complex engineering problem as well as complex engineering activities. In the short form, complex engineering problem is known as the WP, while complex engineering activities will be EA. We mentioned that this complex engineering problem and complex engineering activities are to be incorporated within the curriculum. This will be part and parcel of the courses attending to the respective graduate attributes. How do we know that we need complex engineering problems or complex engineering activities? We will look into the full statements of those graduate attributes. The complex engineering problems as well as complex engineering activities shall be clearly shown. As an extension from our previous discussions, the question was, is it necessarily that complex engineering problem always comes together with the complex engineering activities? Or can we consider complex engineering problem equivalent to complex engineering activities? In this video, we're going to discuss on this. First, let us look at the possible combinations of complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities. Since these two are separated components, there are four possible combinations. It is possible for a course without any complex engineering problem and also without any complex engineering activities. It is also possible to have only the complex engineering problem or only the complex engineering activities. Sometimes we do see courses having both. Now, what are the circumstances that leads to these different combinations? When you have none of them, that means none of the CO is actually mapped to any PO requiring complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities. For complex engineering problems, you will have WA1 to WA6. You will need to refer to your POs, which are meant to address WA1 to WA6. If any of the course outcome attending to the respective POs, then you will know that you need to incorporate the complex engineering problems as a part of the teaching and learning activities as well as the assessment. As for the complex engineering activities, this will be under WA9, which is the communications. You may refer to your list of PO which is attending to WA9 communications. When you have CO attending to PO that is addressing the WA9, then you will require complex engineering activities. The same concept applies. This links to the two combinations here. When there is CO mapping to the PO requiring the complex engineering problems, then you will have complex engineering problems. When you have CO mapping to the PO that require complex engineering activities, then you need to provide complex engineering activities. How about the situations where both complex engineering activities and complex engineering problems happens concurrently. Now, if you look at the graduate attributes, there is no single graduate attribute having the complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities at the same time. That means they are mutually exclusive. This is logical 
because they are looking into two different things. The complex engineering activities is just an activities, engineering related, having some levels of complexity. The attributes for the complex engineering activities are different from the attributes for the complex engineering problems. Except WP2 and ESA2. These two look similar, but the others are different. Where else? The complex engineering problems are looking into the ability of the students to analyze and solve the problems. They have established quite a thorough definitions in terms of the complex engineering problems. Knowing that the complex engineering problems and the complex engineering activities are mutually exclusive, it is possible for these two to be separated, especially when you are dealing with one CO at a time. What does it mean by dealing with one CO at a time? That means when you design the teaching and learning activities or when you are conducting the assessment, you only focus on one CO. In that case, the WP and EA doesn't coexist because the respective CO is attending to the PO. Normally, we do it one to one. It would be either with complex engineering problems or with complex engineering activities. Now, what are the circumstances making both coming together? And this happens when your teaching and learning activities and also the assessment are dealing with more than one COs. When you have two or more CO, one CO with WP, another CO with EA, and when you design the teaching and learning activities, you will have both coming together. Knowing this concept, let us look at the purposes under different combinations. You know that WP is focusing on the ability of the students to identify and solve the complex engineering problems, while EA it's about the students participating in the complex engineering activities. Now, when you have both coming together, you will see students undertaking complex engineering activities and having the ability to solve complex engineering problems. When you come to the assessment, you are assessing the performance of the students in terms of the cognitive levels, affective levels, as well as the psychomotors. Same goes to this. The main difference between complex engineering problems and the complex engineering activities, it will be that the WP can also be assessed solely based on cognitive. The examples of assessment include test, assignment, practical, exam. There is a wide variety in terms of the assessment when it comes to WP. As for the complex engineering activities, the test and exam may not be suitable. It will be quite challenging to make sure the test questions having the intended attributes which are specifically designed for activities. Therefore, I would say that when it comes to the teaching and learning activity as well as the assessment, the complex engineering activities shall be more relevant to student-centered learning practicals and others. You may also incorporate complex engineering activities in SI.
just that you need some mechanism to facilitate the process, making sure that it fulfills the definitions of complex engineering activities. Now, if you want to have both complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities, due to the limitations of the complex engineering activities, most likely the relevant teaching and learning activities and the assessment will be more towards the student-centered learning, practicals, assignments or project-based. These are the required attributes for different combinations of WP and EA which is in line with the definitions of WP and EA. For complex engineering problems, you will require WP1 plus more than two other WP, ranging for WP2 to WP7. As for EA, you will need at least two EA to qualify the relevant engineering activities to be complex. If you are having both, you will need to fulfill the requirements of both. What you see here, everything is systematic. There are clear definitions in terms of the complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities. There are also clear guidelines when the complex engineering problem, complex engineering activities, or both of them should appear. All this shall be governed by the graduate attributes, which we would like to equip our student with. Not just that, this leads to the implications in terms of the appropriate methods that you're going to use in order to accommodate these combinations. My personal observations. Many programs are aware of the definitions of complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities. Those things are well in place in their curriculum. You can see the complex engineering problems and complex engineering activities here and there within their curriculums and the courses offered under a program. The question now it will be whether they have fully digested whole thing, whether everything has been properly streamlined. Sometimes complex engineering problems appear when it is not required. Sometimes complex engineering activities appear when it is not required as well. Some may also be confused as if complex engineering activities must always come together with complex engineering problems. Also, sometimes, inappropriate mechanisms of assessment are designed for the complex engineering activities. All this needs to be further fine-tuned, and this is the responsibility of the CQI committee to educate the lecturers to be more well-versed with the applications of the WP and the EA.